Welcome to the You've Changed podcast. My name is Kate Barron, and I'm talking to the beautiful Lauren Huggins. Hi, welcome. Hi. Uh, so you are a comedy producer. You're mm -hmm. a writer. You're a... Uh, Getting there. Yeah, but you write. Yeah. <laughs> you worked on Breeders. You worked on Ted Lasso. You've done lots of fucking cool stuff. Um, and I just want to talk to you about everything because I fucking loved you the moment I met you. Aww. And I just think you're one of the nicest, coolest people. And I know you're like newish. Are you newish in this industry? I'm very new to this world, yeah. Yeah, how long to have you been doing it for? To the earth, yeah. Very young. So young and spry. Uh, no, well, nine years, actually. Nine years. But that's new... Yeah. You know, yeah. speaking, I'm seven years into comedy mm. and people are like, oh, that's so it's new into comedy. So like, fun. you're not really properly into comedy unless you're 10 plus years. Yeah. And they say to be like an overnight success in comedy, you should be in it for 15 years. Oh, interesting. Isn't I didn't that? Know that. Yeah. yeah. Like, you have to, like, a, basically, people have their overnight success after about 15 years in comedy and then people go, whoa, yeah. this person I came out of that. nowhere. 100% believe that. Because that's just how, like, oh, it's just, yeah, it is wild. How are you? Give me a rundown. How are you doing? What's Do going on with you? Super well. Super well? Super well. Give me the tea. Why so, so well? Uh, nothing in particular. I just... Just life uh, is good. Life is fine, yeah. I'm not, like, I'm not overly busy at the moment. I've just finished um, what felt like a run of about a year and a half of just solid work. Which is amazing for somebody who is working in this industry. Yeah. Like yeah, a year and a half really of hard. solid, consistent yeah, I work. Of, I finished jobs on a Friday, start again yeah. on a Monday. And I did Fuck. that three times last year. The middle job took the longest yeah that was a lot yeah um but yeah so i'm just having a bit of a bit of a break time now a bit of like just getting back on my own projects and things like that yeah learning, that's good learning to read and write again and what do you write what do you you don't have to say like what it is exactly but like what is your what are you like specifically writing are you writing like a sitcom are you writing movie are you writing um well, kind of doing a bit of everything. I'm okay. sort of developing projects. I've got really nice writers and directors that I'm working with at the moment. We've got some stuff we want to pitch. I've got other writers trying to... We've got, like, ideas that we want to flesh out a little bit more and just kind of doing a bit of that, a bit of development stuff. A bit of development. Is yeah. comedy your number one passion? Like, is that sort of like, this is where you want to be is in comedy development? Yeah. Not My, just, like, general... I mean, you'll obviously anyone who works in the industry is like, I'll do whatever and I'll yeah. work in any part of it. <laughs> but like, ideally, if you had your pick, you'd be doing comedy development. Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. I try. I've dabbled in drama. Yeah, it's it's intense. Yeah. You have to be really good at reading and writing. And I don't have that much of an attention span to mm. be. I can't take myself that seriously. I that, would just want to work role. in that to work with. Do you know Saran Jones? You, oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. She is like such a national fucking treasure. Saran Jones. National treasure. <laughs> she could take a shit and film it. And I'd be like, I need to watch that show. Oh, my God. And I need to watch it. Oh, my God. She is shit. so incredible. I just saw a thing on her mm. Instagram. I'm like mm. new show coming out. And I'm like, yeah. If you're if you're in it, I'm watching it. Like that is it. If yeah. if you have one fan, it's me. If you have no fans, I'm dead. Like that is. Yeah. I am your number one. I love her so much. Oh yeah. So the one reason I'd really want to work in drama is to like work around someone just, like just, her. Just so because I've never just seen just her. Scared. I don't think I've seen her do comedy stuff. Uh, I bet she'd be good at it because she's no, just a she killer. Did, sure, she did Chicago. Something tells me she did Chicago. Like the like on a stage. on stage. Oh, yeah. that's I'm cool. I'm sure that was her, and I'm sure she did, and it would have been great. Yeah, yeah. And um, this was before like Doctor Foster and things like that. Yeah. But, um, oh, Doctor Foster is so. That's the first thing I ever saw. I her. Know. Maybe she was in because it was Scott and Bailey and Doctor Foster around the same. That those were the yeah. first couple of things I saw her in, and ever since then, literally, if I oh see God. her, yeah. It's it. You know like, you're going to be entertained. You know you're going to be. Chilled. She's just a sure. I would love to write a part, like write something in a comedy, but have her in mind. It's oh like, my God. she'd probably be like, who fucking is Kate Barron? I'm not going to do this. But if I could, if one day I had never the poll, never. Where I was like, I could write a part for her, that would be like, oh my God. Her and Olivia Coleman. Oh. Just oh. Legends, yeah. right? Just beautiful, yeah. amazing, fucking cool just have women. Just those two, and they own like a business together. They own yeah. a dying repair shop yes and, and then i'm their quirky neighbor you're their quirky neighbor <laughs> with a broken clock but it turns out that clock can travel through time oh yes i love this i think it'd be good titles i uh <laughs> <laughs> i love that you're so what's like you're so into the industry though like you're like not so into it do you think most of your friends are industry people now 
Do you know what? Yes, because of the hours and shit. The hours and stuff. And yeah. there's something about shared trauma that brings people together. Mm. And that is what this industry is. I think sometimes, like you go through, especially if you were on shoot with people for a long time, like right. You spend so much of your life there. You know, you're out for t at least twelve hours of the day with these people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes six days a week, and you bond. It's like family. But yeah, yeah, yeah. A really dysfunctional family, like any family. Yeah. And um, I would say, yeah, a lot of my friends are industry. Actually, I live with non-industry, or as a friend of mine would call them, civilians. We call them normies. Normies. <laughs> yeah. normies. Civilians. That's. Civilians. I mean, I think it is good though to have people who are like not not oh industry yeah, to it's... just bring you back to earth sometimes because you go, oh, this thing happening, da, 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 and people go like relax yeah exactly it's because sometimes i'll freak out over comedy and i'll freak out over something and my sister's a nurse and she's oh, like yeah. i had someone die today and i was like i killed somebody with my joke that's <laughs> like the same thing that's more you important selfish bitch <laughs> <laughs> like i know she's it's just killing people she should give that right up no she's not she's <laughs> not actually she, i think she's a pretty good nurse i don't know how she takes the abuse that she takes sometimes she tells oh, me stories Jesus. where they'll be like be like you fucking fat whore and then she's like okay mrs jenkins so i'm just gonna need you to take your pills oh, i'm like i would that, smother her with a pillow Oh. They literally get so abused by their patients, like these little old racists. And I'm like, <laughs> you just get so, and my sister's a white girl, but like, uh. they're like, they get so abused and they just like, mm hmm, mm hmm. A friend of mine was telling yeah. me that his grandmother um, has gone through a lot. His, he's, his, his mom, I don't think he'd mind me telling the story because I won't name him, but his mom is black, his father is white. So his grandmother on the father's side is white, and she was famously an old racist. But then it very much has famously, ex famously but it very Around much has like part. accepted him, and like because it's her grandson and whatever. Always sort of still had a hate for the mum, but accepted him. But now that she has dementia, all of the progression and growth that she made later in her life, because often people revert back to earlier times, right? So now he went to go visit her, and they're like, she is a character. Wow. And he's like, you can just say she's like a racist bitch. Yeah, and they were like, oh my God. They're a character. They're a character. That is, anytime someone's like, oh, she's quirky, she's batshit nuts, right? Or like, oh, they're like a character or a bit of a hoot. And you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, okay. That's, that's got some connotations. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's more than a few people yeah. I refer to as that. But it is like, I was just like, oh my God, could you imagine somebody like finally being like, and like, can see sort of past the racism and not like that anymore and then they have dementia and they're like what what are all these people doing here oh my god yeah. wild though right like it's terrifying yeah right? what, would, what would your if you had to go back in the past what would you believe that you don't now just that like santa was real not that he isn't he's very whoa. real whoa whoa <laughs> whoa whoa Hang on. whoa what? Yeah, I was actually just thinking, would that be a funny um, like Christmas movie for like a grown adult to believe in Santa? But I think that exists. That yeah. it was like a Netflix oh, one that came out this year, I think, where like this girl was dating a guy and he's like, Santa exists. And she's like, you're insane. This is a red flag. I've got proof. The proof is there. Proof Who, is there. Who's eating my carrots? Who's eating my biscuits? I thought I saw the, I swore, I still to this day, it's, it's rude. I saw the Easter Bunny. I swear to God. What? I swear to God I saw the Easter Bunny and it might have been a fever dream. I swear to God I saw him. And no one will convince me otherwise that he exists. Did he have an He was big. Yeah. No, well, like, it was like, yeah. It was a naked guy who looked like my uncle and he wasn't wearing ears, but he told me to suck on his care. No, I'm just mm, kidding. Mm, I know him. Yeah, you do. I went out with him. Yeah, exactly. Flaggy. 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 Majorly flaggy. <laughs> oh my God. That's good talking about being molested by my uncle. I wasn't actually. Tr trigger warning. We'll put that before the fucking <laughs> podcast. I don't even know how to make a joke out of that, but <laughs> <sighs> I made a joke out of it the other day on stage, but it, nice. it went well. But it was, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I keep talking about people being molested. It's, it? it's it's you know it's hilarious. <laughs> it's a good is, it, ground. is it hilarious? Uncharted territory in comedy, I say. <laughs> More, Give me. More, why don't we go into the change? We'll go into the change <laughs> aspect. How about that? So you can talk about what? Oh my god, the change! It sounds like what a woman goes through when she <laughs> reaches a certain age. Oh fuck! Is this like yeah, what people it, are gonna think? This know, is like my menopause podcast. Yeah. Oh, fuck! Yeah, I'm so far off of that. Yeah, the I'm changes, young. I wasn't a racist. Oh, I was a racist. I'm not now, and now I am again from dementia. Yeah, exactly. That's a change. Get that person on. Yeah, the that's, crazy, that's crazy racist grandma. Yeah. What could go wrong? Oh I my went god! A change apparently. 
Could you imagine? Yeah. Oh, that'd be so. She'd be fine with me, probably. Yeah. Um, so you don't. It doesn't need to be anything big. It doesn't need to be like this monumental thing because I find sometimes like really small things happen in life that really change your path and really like kind of alter. And you go, holy fuck! If I hadn't made that like one decision, yeah, I wouldn't be here. So what is something? It can be a couple things. It can be whatever you want to talk about. So what's well, something you've gone through? I thought about this, and I really like the idea of like the sliding doors, like the tiniest change. Yeah, like that was a great movie. I know. I love that movie. I haven't I thought about that movie in a really long time. Yeah. Sliding Doors, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Shout out. John, John Hannah. I don't. I forget who the guy was, but yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it, I would love to have a really nice like sliding doors moment. Yeah. Where one tiny thing changed my whole life, but. I couldn't think of it, so. <laughs> I was gonna be like, oh, what is this? I'm leaning <laughs> no, in. No, I know. I wish I could bring you in. As but would you know, but I you wouldn't know, right? If there was a sliding doors, you wouldn't no, know what would happen. No, Maybe that actually has happened. Maybe you have missed a bus. Maybe it hasn't though. That's it. But you know what I mean? Like maybe you have missed the bus or maybe you didn't and then it would have changed everything. The butterfly effect, right? I mean, I do have a big change story. It's a big change story. Okay, give it to me. A story I call Town Mouse and Country Mouse. Except okay. I'm both mice. Okay. Like Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. The parent trap. Yeah. I'm both mice. <laughs> you have a bad so, accent in both ones. Yes. yes. Thank you. I actually thought her British accent was very good. And then I would like imitate it. And I'm like, oh, I'm Every really good. In that film, the, the depth of her method acting was just. I rate her. I believe she was a twin. <laughs> I believed it. I believe there was two of them. That's a great movie. It's a great film. And Mean Girls, like Lindsay Lohan, girl, I, come back to us. I love her. I, I know. Her. I watched that. Even her on Mykonos, just dancing. Oh, my God. And just it's like, wasn't she on like a billionaire's it. yacht? Like, whatever, when they get paid I for. Hope. Yeah. I hope so. Because those are the ones where the, like, those, like, like Middle Eastern billionaires like pay for celebrities oh, yeah. and stuff. They pay them like a million dollars just to come on and like just hang out with them. And well, hang out and do whatever. <laughs> like, you know, the Dubai poo girls and all that shit. A do what? You know that. No. Uh, last year it came out that a bunch of these like Instagram models who they're always like in Dubai, in Dubai, in Dubai with my daddy, like whatever. And they all have like Chanel bags and everything. Basically a video got leaked of one of them showing that one of the guys over there, because they're they have so much money. They just like, yeah. what do you even spend it on when you can buy everything and you have everything, right? So then they start going more and more and more. Like depressed. So really depraved shit. And when they're out in the water where it's like anything goes, so they go on these huge super yachts oh my God. with like there's these no Instagram girls. There's no laws. And they pay them like $200,000 to literally in her mouth. They pooed in her mouth. Dubai poo girls. Dubai poo girls. And then oh so the video got leaked of it happening of her because like I guess the, the video. Luck. It's the new Joy Luck Club. Oh my God. Dubai. No, it's it's because also that's like so fucked up and so dehumanizing. And so, and I know we're like, you know, whatever, talking about it in kind of a joking way, but, like, it's so fucked up, and it's disgusting. Plus, it's fucking dangerous and, like, diseases. But then all these other Instagram girls are like, that happened to her, but that didn't happen to us, that didn't happen to us. And everyone's like, mm, cool Range Rover. When did you get that? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a whole... Jeez, Dubai poo girls. Dubai wow. poo girls. So, no, my story's got nothing to do with that. <laughs> Just, I wanted Damn to it. explain that. It's got nothing but to do with that. But then in Dubai, you can't chew gum on the on the subway. So, you know. Well, that's disgusting. That's that stuff disgusting. Was, you know, on, the, on the fence, but that. That is. Whew. Draw the line there. Yeah, my friend got ticketed for chewing gum on their metro. Brilliant. Yeah, but if you go on the water, wow. anything goes. Anything. Chew gum. International. Anything you want. Wow. Okay, yeah. give me it. Anyway, Town yes, Mouse, Country Mouse, Mouse. Country Mouse. So, I grew up in South London. Yep. Uh, Bromley area, it's fine, it's a bit shit. Um, and I don't um, know the area. Is it shit? Is it like a? Was it like a harder area to grow up in, of London? Or is it kind of like a like middle class or not? It's just got nothing going on. Okay. I mean, there's no offense to Bromley. You've already offended, so it's I've fine. offended it. Um, for me personally, I didn't get much out of it at all. Yeah. Okay. But if this thing wouldn't have happened, I probably would still be there. That's 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 the irony of it. Also. Okay. I basically, when I was 16, I had to move from there to like the West Country, the dead of the West Country. Finished GCSEs and my dad got a job somewhere else, so we had to move. And I was a, I was a normal 16 year old, you know, full of issues. Yeah, of course. Full of, full of them. That no one understands. You no, don't understand my struggles. Me. Yeah. Oh my God, do you dye your hair black? But, I did. <laughs> Do you know what? No. Uh, the other way, I put like fluorescent yellow. Oh yeah, okay. There. But yeah, we dye our hair to like oh, do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember my geography teacher saying I looked like a badger, um, <laughs> and just 
you know, thinking, great, that's awful. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. An awful decision I've made. You look like a fucking badger. Well, I'm sure they were no prize pig themselves. He went on to be Mr. England. What? No, he didn't. Oh. Oh, God, no. He I was like, like he, he looked shut. like a guinea pig. He like <laughs> I was like, shut up. <laughs> I had a teacher tell me in... 12th grade, which is like your last year of high school, it's different over there, right? Yeah. So and in 12th grade, so it's like when you're graduating, before I graduated, you know, she goes, I know you think you're funny. You're not. No one thinks you're funny. No, no one thinks you're smart. And she just ripped me apart in front of the class. And then she's like sent me to the principal's office for like talking or making jokes in class. Uh, but then she died of cancer. So we're all good. Wow, that is the world works in mysterious and wonderful karma. ways. Oh yeah, she was a major. Wow. Yeah, she was an awful person. And everyone's like, yeah, but she's dead. I have no, um, I yeah, have no that's feeling not a about get out that. Of jail free card. It's like, yeah, like that. To me, nah. if you were a dick during life, people should remember you as a dickhead. Right. Like no one's like, but like, oh, Hitler don't speak died. Ill. Yeah, don't speak Ill, Jimmy Savile. He's don't. Dead. Yeah, don't speak ill of it. Like no, if how you lived, let's remember you how you lived. Yeah, but there's this want to forget all that anyway, oh, flush it all out. But, anyway. but I digress. So you're you're a teacher yes. who looked like a guinea pig. Yeah. So anyway, I was 16. And I you know had all sorts falling out with friends and things like that. So then I had to move to Gloucester. You had a falling out with them just because you moved. No, no. It's because just teenagers angsty. are disgusting and they won't. You know. Yeah. Got to get. You got to spray with the water. Hopefully. Were you popular? Oh, I don't know. I picture I don't you being like so. kind of like a quirky. I I guess so. It wasn't an outside. I was just completely in the middle. Middle ground. I think. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Didn't make too much of a fuss of myself. Mm -hmm. I was. A, I was a total booby. Like I made a twat of myself a lot. Well, yeah, but for you. Laughs. I'd but you for can't laughs. not. But, uh, even as a teenager, everyone's an idiot. Yeah. Exactly. Even the ones that exactly. don't think they are, you're yeah. like you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I loved making people laugh and things like that. But again, like I just wanted to be a vet. A vet. A, yeah. I like a veterinarian. Vet. Yeah. You yeah. just loved animals. Fucking loved animals. Oh, a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So why did you go to vet school or did you try? Oh, so this comes into. The oh story. my god. Okay. I yes, know. Yes. It's all. It's all a web. So I. You're in the country. Reluctantly, I had to move to the country at 16. Yeah. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. When mm. I got there, it was, it was dead. It was. I. Worse was than Bromley. There. There was just nothing there, and I didn't understand mm. what the. I'd never been to the countryside for a start. I'd never actually been out of zone six yeah out of croydon because you're like a proper london kid pretty much yeah i mean we didn't i didn't know anyone anywhere else all my family were like around the corner and yeah in the sort of vicinity of where we lived there was just no reason to go anywhere else mm -hmm. um like I, I don't think i went up north till i was about 24. yeah I, I, it just didn't didn't need to and then i so i moved to the countryside and it was mad because it was around the time like Facebook had just become a thing. Yeah. Everyone had Facebook. So I had a Facebook in London. I get there. No one's on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Like, Who are you people? <laughs> and they were Bebo. I don't know if you had Bebo in Canada. No. Right. So I don't know what. We had Friendster. Oh. Friendster was like a whole different thing. I have no idea what that is. Friendster it was sounds like exactly the same. It's these sort of social network. It was like a social network. Thing. And I didn't really understand it when you put up a profile. I accidentally catfished somebody, but I didn't do it on purpose. See, I would purposely catfish somebody at 60. We used to do that all the time. Did you? All the time. On Awful. Facebook. I accidentally did it because I didn't realize you were supposed to put up a picture of yourself. So I put up a picture of Jessica Simpson with sunglasses Brilliant. on. Brilliant. So some these guys were like, you're really pretty. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> How do they know what I look? Oh my God, thank you. Uh, so but I didn't realize that they were genius. looking at the picture of genius. fucking Jessica Simpson thinking that was me. Uh, and it was funny. I did I, not know. I dated a guy that I met on was Friends. Was it Nick Lachey? Was it Nick Lachey? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was his first wife. <laughs> I dated a guy I met and then, but like, I didn't even think that I had catfished him, but I definitely had. And when I showed up, he must have been like, the fuck? Oh so I was just this fat, awkward kid. <laughs> I was not Jessica Simpson. I was so far from it. Hey, now, I'd never tell you you're not Jessica Simpson. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, so you would do it on purpose. What an evil person. I was like 40. Who were you catfishing? Like, if it's oh, gross you know old you men, I support. Didn't know. You, just, I you, or you just did it to anyone. It was like early MSN days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just had nothing else to do. And you put a song lyric in the in your status bar and be like, Bruh. all the time. God, I was I was really emotive back then. I mean, why aren't we doing? Why aren't we putting these song lyrics out now? I this, love that. This is we need to get our feelings out. Well, people do it, but put, they do it in Instagram stories now. 
That's and they true. leave like their cryptic like, oh, it's man. good riddance and out of my life. And you're like, okay, what just happened? And they're like, DM me for details. And you're like, oh, fuck, girl. Just fucking tell everyone. I hate that so much. Somebody like it's put this. Great, though. I love it. No, I, love I can't. That. Somebody put up like a picture of like, just like it was their arm with like, um, like IVs and stuff in it. And they're like, worst. Oh, that's the best. It's hospital, worst it's hospital day hospital. ever. And everyone's like, what happened? They're like, just DM me for details. I'm like, don't publicly yeah. post a picture yeah. and then we all have to go. You want to type it out. And I know you're copying and pasting the message yeah. of what happened. You just want to know who's interested. <laughs> I'll just find out from selfies. someone else. Hospital hospital bed selfies. Hospital oh, bed selfies. I just love it. I love we that. had I when, chaos. when Gina was getting her, because our mutual friend and how we know each other is Gina yeah. Lyons, who's amazing, shout out. Great. Amazing Great. and very funny woman. Uh, she had her appendix out right after French at the last and I went to go in the hospital and she was taking all these selfies when she was really <laughs> fucked up she on loves drugs selfie, loves it? a selfie loves so it. she's like Ugh. and when she was so <laughs> fucked up she was taking these selfies and then she's like okay okay like edit them edit them so I'm face tuning her hospital <laughs> selfies for her and getting rid of like any bags or whatever and trying to make her look great after Dude. surgery and she's all fucked on drugs I'm and then afterwards she was like I it. can't believe you let me post all those I'm like you were like abusing me into face tuning them for you and then you were like I'm gonna post these these are great and then you go I can't believe I posted that <laughs> and then she left them off of course this is why I think they're great because you that's just why I love can't her. be in your right mind surely oh my god yeah. no I'm actually so afraid if like when I'm in the hospital whenever if what what I would say yeah oh, my oh god. god yeah I'd be so afraid of what oh, I would say secrets. or like tell your partner the truth about like nah, actually remember that time I said this I said <laughs> that and you're like <laughs> god I hate your mother <laughs> well you said it now well you, you said it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're in the country yes, you're catfishing people country. I'm catfishing people uh, no, this I, is how I, I know given, I have ADD I'd given like, up I'd given up by then I'd, I'd yeah. give it, I'd you know I'd folded it I folded it in I'd, yeah you know, there's only so much catfishing you can do as a 14 year old till you think True. God. Yeah. <laughs> sad. Um, but so I was in the country. I had no mates. Didn't know anyone. No one had Facebook. That's they so sad. Like, oh, so what did your dad do that made you guys move out there? Ah, uh, he's a goldsmith. Oh. I know. It sounds like more kind of. It sounds posh medieval. and fancy. It's not. It's quite grubby. Well, yeah, I know yeah, that it's like hard work because he's those, making jewelry. Yeah. But why would he have to go into the country more space? Well, so he had to change his job. So he started. He used to do a lot of stuff in London, and then mm. a sculpture foundry uh, uh. gave him a job over in Gloucestershire. So he moved. Gotcha. Over there. I okay. Know. I was sixteen. I didn't care. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, great. I think most people couldn't name what their dads do for a living or what their dads. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But uh, unless it's like doctor. Yeah, or, or some, you, know, you know, soldier. I d what's a what's a job? Teacher. So that soldier. Is soldier? that a job? Is that a job? I yeah, if it's like a basic job that everyone knows. Yeah, yeah but if it's Dentist. like most people don't know. Soldier. My dad yeah. even still, I'm like, mm, I don't totally know what he did. I sort of know ish <laughs> what industry yeah. he was in, but like, <laughs> eh, it's complicated. I, I like the ones though that, where their dads just had these like mad jobs. So my friend had uh, has a dad, and uh, he's had loads of different jobs, like detective. He's Oh, it's, he's writing his memoirs. It's hysterical. I cannot wait. And he was a detective, but he's he like, does something but else. But like, he, was he like I'm a dirty sure cop? He's a di like a detective, but like a sort of under hat, like n a not official one. So like they call it a detective, but it's kind of like someone just paid him to be a bit of a dodgy bloke. I just, yeah. But so then he wasn't a detective. No, <laughs> probably not. Oh my god! I just... Oh my god! There, I there was a Reddit where this guy was like furious, and he was trying to be like, "Am I the asshole or is my wife the asshole?" <laughs> Um, and it basically the guy was saying that he's a pilot, mm. but his wife won't introduce him as that. She introduces him as like a restaurant manager or whatever, because that's what he does. But he, but he says he's flown so many hours on his simulation um, video game that it's it's disrespectful yeah. for her not to introduce him as a fucking pilot. Oh my god! And people are like, mate, do you know how many hours of Grey's Anatomy I've watched? By that sense, I'm poker champion. Like for real, like or like you watch so much Grey's Anatomy, you could perform surgery. You're a doctor. Like please Truly. be respectful. But he was dead serious. Like he had played so many hours of this flight simulation aviation video game. What is it? Just clouds? I don't. At you? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. He's <laughs> and he and he's like he reckons he could fly a plane easily. Fair. And that he should be when he's introduced. So she introduced him at a work party. Going, my husband. They go, "What is he doing?" Oh, he oh, like manages a restaurant. Wow. And she, he was furious. As if he's not proud of that. I'd love to have a restaurant. Amazing. And, and you know, what? no shame in hard work. That's what I say always. Like yeah. any work is good for you. But the fact that he, the fact that he wanted to be introduced as a pilot, I'm like, 
Oh my god, this man. There's no way he's going to bed. No way. There's no way he, someone who insists they're a pilot after playing video games no. is going to make a woman come. That's a fact. There's only one joystick he's playing with, and it's not, <laughs> and it's not hers. <laughs> and I know that for a fucking fact. Wow. Yeah. Dunno. It sounds hot. <laughs> You're like, I'm interested. I'm, I love toxic men. I'm not not interested. I'm not not interested. I love delusion. I I know. Sexy. But that's why you work in this industry because you're so yeah. fucked. Okay, and we're back in the country. We're back in the country. Back it's in the country. A nightmare. So I went from being what I assumed about myself was actually quite a fun, open kid. Like I didn't, I didn't have a great time. Yeah. As a teenager, it's none, no one does. But like the, I just got sucked into being like a, you know, like when you get a bag of pistachios, and sometimes you get the shell without the nut inside. Yeah. That's what I was. One of those like the empty pistachio shit. Like I just lost all my inners. Oh, my, that's like, so sad. Su- no, it's sad, isn't it? It's like a little empty shell a of yourself. A little empty shell. And do you know what though? Like, so th- I see. I saw it for many years as such a bad thing that happened. That's the bad thing, the big bad. Mm. But I think about my life now and my career, and that is all because of that change. Because I wanted to be a vet. Mm-hmm. So when I went to the open day for the college there, the only college within about 17 mile radius or something, it's I went to the open day and I wanted to be a vet. Looked at all the sciences. I mean, I, there was no way I was ever going to be a vet. It's insanely hard to be a vet. I Right, so we have this thing here where in for GCSEs, you do like double science, like standard, right. or you do triple science if you're good at it. Mm. I never did triple science. Mm. I didn't even know there were three kinds of sciences. So there's my point. You just so, want to like play with kittens all day. Is that not the job? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think a lot of people are just like, I'm a cat lady, so I can be a vet. When you're like, mm. yeah, 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 no. Are you a cat lady? Do you have a cat? I... You strike me as a cat person. Uh, you have a cat lady personality. I do, and I will end up that way. Like, oh. <laughs> no. My mum's got a cat, and yeah. I just spent some time with this cat recently. We've not always got on. You and the cat, or you yeah, and your mum? But okay. like, you know, everyone says, oh, my cat's a dick. No, this one is, she's- No, not at all. I had she, a cat that was she... like a dog. And it was like a little what? like, it would like follow you around and be like, oh, and yeah. he's like kind of very, sa- even a the vet was nice like, cat. I think he's a bit of like a simple, cause the vet would give him like shots or like yeah. inject or take his temperature up his bum and he would just be like, mm-hmm. and the vet was like, that's not a normal reaction. Yeah, Usually no. cats are like freaking out. No, my mom's cat is, is horrible. Oh, she's horrible. Oh. She's horrible, but. She wouldn't leave me alone. I think because my mum's away mm. at the moment, so I went to stay back at home. Yeah. And she would walk on my face at night, and that's Love her it. way of saying, hi, how are you? I'd like to get to know you. <laughs> yeah, putting her ass in your face. Oh, Truly. I love it. Constantly. I love a forward girl like that. I know. I mean, if only I had, I wish I had that kind of confidence. Just to stick your ass in someone's face yeah. and be like, I, I want to get to know you. Yeah, because you know what? It worked. And yeah. I wanted to get to know her. And I was happy for her to be there. So <laughs> that is amazing. We can all learn something. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to be a vet. And I went to this college open day. I looked at the sciences. I was like, yeah, sure, I can do this. Yeah. Um, and then it was raining outside and we were waiting for a cab to take us back to the train station, go back to London. Uh, so you had moved back at this point? I hadn't moved there yet. Okay. So it was summer holidays between our year 11, which is the end of your GCSE year when you go into sixth form, um, or college. So I, so it was raining outside and we ran into the media building for Mm. shelter. And then this guy came up and was like, hey, do you want to do A-levels that have no exams? I was like, I was like yeah. So I've gone from oh wanting to be God. a vet to wanting to not actually do exams at all. Yes. Um, and then he showed me around the media, showed me all these kind of different courses you could do, like B-Tech courses. I'd never heard of that. I didn't yeah. know there were A-levels you could do that weren't exam-based, but were more practical-based. And, you know, my, my dad's a practical learner with what he does and... So I think I've kind of inherited that because I, I can't, like, I'm useless at kind of getting factual thoughts down. I can I'm bad write, with, I like, exams I can write weird made-up stuff. stuff. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm saying. But in terms yeah. of, like, retaining information or anything academic, no. Yeah, I'm bad with that, too. Um, so I was like, that sounds great. So I ended up doing a video techniques course. So that was your sliding doors moment. That was, yeah, yeah. You said you didn't have and one. And there was like, a door there. If it hadn't been raining and you hadn't run into that building. Yeah, that's it. That is it. You're it, right. It wouldn't oh. have happened. And that could have Gwyneth. changed everything. You are Gwyneth. I'm so cool. 
anyway. Put out your vagina candle now because Thank you. this is I legit. Yoni. Your yoni candle. Yoni oh my god. Candle. Fucking yeah, yoni. Yeah, that's it then. I but that is like yet. legit because if you hadn't run in, it wouldn't have happened. I think that's amazing. So that was it. And then I did that and I virtually did the same thing at uni. Yeah. And then nine years later. Wow. Podcast. And you liked Extremely it because that's also super rare. Like Red Richardson, I was talking with him and he was on last week's podcast. And he was saying that he went to university for like history. I know a bunch of people who've gone to school for like oh, different 100%. things and they do nothing related to it at all. Like, you know, everything I study, I don't fucking do anything related to it. But it's just like, you just go, but for someone to actually go and be like, oh, I figured out this is what I like. Yeah. You did it and now you're working it and you actually genuinely love it. That's yeah. amazing. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, it's a toxic relationship working in TV. Like it yeah. is. Everyone knows that. It's, it's yeah. difficult. It's hard work. It is really hard work. It's, yeah your self-confidence just goes like this all the time but i couldn't do anything else i could absolutely mm. not be a vet right now yeah i would really not trust myself <laughs> so i think i'll just get a guinea pig yeah oh cute you should get a guinea pig yeah well i started a new thing i'm just gonna plug my new small business here what you have a new business no it's not at all it's just what i call it it's called seed cafe I basically just put a bird feeder on my window. And I ah, oh, that's cute. And I just, it's only been there a few days and I look at it every morning and just look out and there's birds at my window now. Yeah. I feel like Snow White. That's what I my dad does. I love it. My dad is so into like feeding the birds. As he's gotten older, he's gotten a lot because he used to be mm. like kind of like a rough kind of like just a, a stoic kind of guy. Like, you know, less is more yeah. for talking and that kind of, unless he drank, which then it was all, all. <laughs> All barrels firing there. But, like, he's gotten really into, like, birds and bird oh, feeding and stuff. Oh, yeah. like, I'm, like, a bird perv. Loves like, it. I'm such a bird A bird perv. pervert? I'm a bird perv. And, you know, I get it from my dad. He's, like, the ringleader of the bird pervs. Sounds like he fucks them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, in the country, like, what is there to do? Right. Oh, do they still live in the country? Yeah, no, they do. Oh, they so, still live there? Where yeah, you yeah. Moved. yeah oh, okay, yeah. wow. They still live there. 15 years on. No oh, shit. They live there, yeah. So your dad is a bird fucker. Dad's a bird fucker, mama's a cat. <laughs> um, and you and your Gwyneth Paltrow moment. And I just had my Gwyneth Paltrow moment. That is amazing, though, that that happened. And there's nothing that, there's no moment where you were like, oh, I wish I, has there ever been a moment where you go, I actually wish I became a vet? No. Yeah. Because I, do you know what? I knew I would never have been able to do it. I just loved animals a lot as a kid. Yeah. I still do now. But. Ooh. I think it's incredible. Well, the most difficult thing about a vet is like it's the human body is basically the same anatomy for everyone, right? Yeah. Pretty well. But animals, yeah, and I don't wildly know, yeah, different, and you're just expected to know how they go. That's it. And you've got to cut them open, and that's yeah. sad. And you have to tell people that, you know, the hamster didn't make yeah. it. Yeah. cannot be doing that. I was um, in Manchester recently, and I um, we came across a bird that had obviously been hit by a car or something. Oh. It was on the side of the road. There's all these drunk people all around. And we didn't know if we really wanted to touch it, but it was late late at night. And me and my friend, we were walking. We are like, we don't really know what to do. And us and this other guy were kind of standing around. And all these drunk people kept almost stepping on it. So we were kind of blocking it from being, oh, like, squished. No. And we called this 24-hour vet. And we're like, what do we do? And they're like, um... You could bring it in, um, but I wouldn't touch it because there's like a bird flu going around and we're not going to do anything. We would just put it down and charge you. Oh. And I was like, wait, so you're just going to, we're nice going to have to like anonymously drop off. pay for a cab. Yeah. It's like one of those, like when you don't want your baby, you put it through like a fire yeah. station. <laughs> a church doorstep. A church doorstep. <laughs> leave the bird at the you're, church. You're a dead They'll pigeon. <laughs> God bless little one. Yeah. Put it back up the organ. I just saw a nun at Vauxhall Station. Oh, there's it. a nunnery. Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh, that's why I saw I her. Near it, yeah. I was just thinking it's so weird to see them in the wild. They're not ghosts. <laughs> I know. I know they're real people. And like I've seen them before. And I, you know, yeah. I went. I once did a um, sister act to like outdoor movie. They were playing sister oh, act two, which is yeah. one of the best movies of all time. Right. And they did. They had like back a, in the habit. Yes. Yeah. And they had a sing along because it was like one of those sing along movies. And I did it. It was at like St. Peter's Church in Toronto. And they had a courtyard and a bunch of the nuns came and we did a sing along and I was singing with nuns while watching Sister Act and I almost like Oh my it god. It was a moment where I was like, if I died right now, that's okay. Oh I what just a like way I was go. in heaven. I'm not religious at all, but it was just a beautiful yeah. a oh, beautiful that's way to go. So nice. Yeah, it's but I just never like see that. them in the wild in London. Like if you're at fucking the Vatican, yeah, you're seeing yeah. them fucking on the yeah. metro and stuff. But like here, fucking I never on the metro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not fucking. That's what they're up to. Yeah. A couple of fingers up under yeah. the skirt. Is that disrespectful? The old nunnery? No, no, it's just true. 
It is just true. Those um, girls, well, I'm not even going to say that. Girls that's, gone wild. Girls gone wild, not gone wild. Girls. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, they should go to Dubai and get some Chanel bags. Guess what? New habits? You guys should totally go to Dubai. Oh. Oh, it's awful. Tell me something. Is there something in your life? Because that's a big change to do mm. that. But then you've been quite steady since then. Is there something in your life that you want to change or have wanted to change that you've tried and failed? Or like is something you go, I do want to do this, but like I don't have the time or I just have tried and failed? Or like with me, it was my wait forever. Like tried yeah. and failed for the majority of my life, which a lot of people struggle with that. Is there any been anything like that for you? So... Do you mean like a change? Just anything that you want to, habits you want to change. Yeah. Well, I recently stopped smoking. That's really good. And that's wild for me. Especially people, I feel like on film sets and working in this industry, they smoke a lot. Because just a stress reliever, it's an excuse to step away and just yeah. have a minute by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That was really difficult. I mean, I started, because obviously, to be fair, the rise of like children vapes. Yeah. Which are, you know, great, colourful. Yeah, great for tasty, strokes and yummy. all that. Yeah. Um, and I sort of kind of went on to nicotine free ones of those. Mm. And it's been probably about two and a half months now. Two and a half months is a long is time. Mad. Yeah. How long me. have you smoked for? Since I was about 12. Holy shit. Yeah. You started smoking when you were 12? Well, like, not like. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. The but reg, but still. First cigarette, 12. Fuck. Yeah. So you were probably regularly smoking when you were a teenager. What did your parents think? They Well, my dad smoked indoors. Oh, so, so they couldn't even kind of tell if there was smoke because you're just blending into yeah. the... Yeah. I Does he was... still smoke? No, he gave up years ago. Oh, Cold good for turkey. Him. So did he my dad. Was... Yeah, weird. My dad and just started popping Werther's Originals, like candies. Oh, yeah. He just started eating those. And then he sort of went off the booze for a while and started just it, getting you the sugar fix. You have to replace fix. it with something you else. You do. That's why people gain yeah. weight after smoking often. A hundred percent. Have you gained weight, do you think? I've definitely gained weight because I got really into desserts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner instead. I mean, sounds great. I... I, the world is ending. Fucking eat desserts honestly, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Who gives a shit? My housemate made a really lovely banana bread the other day. Mm, and love just, it. Right? Yeah. Instead of just eating banana bread, I covered it in cream and then chocolate sauce and then sprinkles. Oh. I didn't even know I had sprinkles. I literally foraged in my flat for them. I foraged. That sounds and I found great. It. it was great, but I've been it. doing that for pretty much everything I've been eating in the last three or four weeks you know back in the day i used to think that having like muffins and stuff every day for breakfast was like a healthy option because i feel like that's what you're presented well you mean literally like a, yeah, like, like a blueberry muffin like that's a blueberry muffin five a day. it's like it feels like a healthy Where's option and i worked with a guy who was like this very like very fit and aggressive russian guy weird that he was aggressive <laughs> and he was like super super fit and one day he just went you know muffins are just cake without icing right <gasps> And I was like, what? And he goes, you're literally eating a piece of cake every day when you come to work. And I was That's like, funny. That's so true. Holy shit. I never thought about it. It's He's naked like, cake. It's naked cake. If you think about what goes into a cake and what goes into a muffin, they are the exact same, Whoa. except they'll add blueberries or whatever. And one just doesn't have icing on it. Whoa. But it's literally having a piece of cake. And I was like, holy. But I was like, oh, my God, I'm so skinny. <laughs> my like, skinny decaf muffin. Like, it's, yeah, it'd be like a venti mocha <laughs> and my muffin. Why are you not skinny? <laughs> like, but it's fuck because that's like you grow up. Like, I was just, I had no food education. And I was like, yeah. always overweight. So it's just like, I literally thought there was a healthy option. I had wow. no idea that there wasn't. So when you're like, banana bread, I was like, mm -hmm. that sounds like a pretty good breakfast. But then you're like, oh, yeah, that is cream and, and chocolate and everything. Cake. I mean, um, it, is it had cake. chocolate in it as well. It was I made banana bread for the very first time recently, and I had no idea. It was, thank you, and it turned out really well. Nice. Um, I like loved it, and it was delicious. But I had no idea it's mostly sugar. Oh well, so like, when my housemate got it out to like make it. It's a lot. She showed me the amount of butter that went in it. Oh yeah. I was like, Jesus, that's just that is just butter. Yeah. Covered in bananas. That's that's literally and sugar and sugar. And then I put cream and chocolate sauce oh my God, and I love sprinkles that as well. So, But that's a really good change to make to not be smoking anymore. That's incredible. Yeah, I, I don't know if it'll last. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. being very kind. Wait till you're stressed out. Well, I, I have been stressed out. I'm kind of avoiding triggers. There's certain pubs I'm not going to go to. Right. Because it's like that's where I go. And certain places in London and things mm. like that that I know are really triggering. And certain points of the night where I'm like, right, I need to stop now. Stop 
stop drinking here. Yeah, I mean, I drinking and happened. smoking go hand in hand. Oh. And, like, and it's much bigger over here. In yeah. Canada, like if you smoke, you're because it's been illegal for so long to be smoking indoors or even you can't smoke within like six feet of entries to yeah. places and or next to windows of restaurants so you have to go quite it's really to make it a pain in the ass to go out and smoke right That's it, yeah and you can't smoke in places so like i think there it's quite rare so if you are a smoker you're very much on your own yeah. but here it's much more common also because pub culture is more prevalent here and people outside of the pub and you can just smoke and stuff like that oh, but i actually yeah, love the smell of smoke oh, same. i love being around it because oh, it reminds me of my now. dad no. But I've never smoked. I've never smoked. Really? I mean, like, I've yeah. tried cigarettes. And, like, when I've been drunk, I've, like, smoked, like, yeah. but I've never really properly smoked. Yeah. Um, But I just love the smell of it. It, like, always, love... it would always get bad on a shoot, as we were saying earlier, mm. when, when we're filming something, because that is such an intense yeah. bubble of time. Yeah. That without a break for any reason, you need something to really harshly break your thoughts up. Otherwise, you will go insane. Yeah. And... Huge hats off to the people on set that don't smoke. So you need to now put in like a coping mechanism yeah. um, that will make it so you don't smoke. So what are what's your ideas? Do you have ideas? Are you going to do like medita I mean, meditation in the corner? I thought so. I mean, seed cafe. You know, yeah, yeah. go watch my, your birds. Go and watch my birds. That's, but you can't be on set and be like, got to run home. I'll be back in four hours. Got to go feed the birds. Cam. Oh my God, that is actually right? such a good idea. Do you know what? I bet you, if you got a nanny cam and you put it on YouTube as like a live streaming thing, I bet you you'd be yeah. like a millionaire. And I could just put some really like ambient birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could put it on for your cats. Oh, yeah, I actually love that idea. Great. Bird cafe. Wow. Seed cafe. Seed cafe. Fuck, bird I already cafe. fucked it up. Bird cafe is our second site we haven't opened yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's in Brixton. <laughs> the birds are a little rougher down there. Oh, yeah. Rough birds. Rough birds. I love it. Those are the kind <laughs> your dad likes because they fight back. <laughs> Sorry to your dad. I don't no, actually it's true. mean. <laughs> I don't actually mean he fucks It's friends. funny because it's true. Give me uh, something. Is there something in your life? Because obviously this podcast is about change, and mm. I think change is super healthy, and people go through it all the time, and it's really like I love. I just love hearing about it because I've experienced yeah. so much change in my life. I love hearing about other people's. But what is? Is there something in your life that you hope never changes? Is there something that you're like, Ooh, if this that. changed, I would be actually devastated? Yeah. Do you know what's really sad about it is for me, food is my comfort. Mm. Food has always been my comfort. And one thing that is the same in any country I go to or anywhere I am or any age I've been, the same, the thing that's kept same, McDonald's. Mm. I know that sounds awful. And no, really I don't think it does. I, I think it's just like a comfort thing. It's, it, you know, kids love it. Yeah. Kids and grown ups. Yeah. Everyone loves it. The Dad people who are like, it. I haven't eaten McDonald's in a go fuck yourself. Oh, fuck, off. fuck off. You're not better than me. No. Like, get the fuck 100%. out of here. I, when people go on their high horse about that yeah. shit, I'm like, have fun. No, I, and I tell you why. So it's, I, you know, there's a, something so rewarding about it. When you're a mm. kid, um, you have hobbies. I didn't because I was lazy as shit. But, yeah. you know, you, you hear of kids with hobbies. Yeah, you hear of these kids. Dance kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music kids. Yeah. Kids that have friends, all yeah. these weird all those kids, are weird people. Yeah, um, and they'll they'll do like a competition. Yeah, and then their mum will take them to McDonald's afterwards. But you weren't one of those kids who just go and watch those kids at McDonald's uh, as a creep no, in the background. No, I used to just go f food shopping with my mum, and then McDonald's would be like the reward. The treat. Like you, you get, you get. I, do you know what? I can't tell you any shop we went to when I got trawled around the shops mm. as a kid, but I remember McDonald's. Yeah, that was just such a. It's such a reward system. Yeah, and then. I, uh, you know, McNuggets have never changed. No. They'll never change. I think they have probably more chicken in them now because legally they have to. Uh, probably, yeah. But over here it's better than the... North, Is it? North America, they're allowed to have like yeah. worse chemicals and stuff in them and shit because, you know. But yeah. now that we're not EU anymore over here, it's going to be all... Yeah. So for me, it's just, I don't you know. I hope McDonald's just, never changes. I hope McDDonald's never changes. I know it's an evil corporation. And no, whatever. I support healthy, that. But it's... The one thing that I don't, I've had so many lives. My life has changed in so many ways. I've had yeah. relationships, I've had friendships. Everything changes. My job changes every few months. Yeah. McDonald's will never change. Hmm. I actually think that's oddly I know. beautiful. It will where it never is like, change. I never even thought that you are in a constant state of change because when you're in this industry, Constantly. nothing, nothing is stable, yeah. nothing is secure. You could get a gig where you have to move way far away. Or whatever, you have to go where the work goes. So everything is sort of in flux all the time, but that is like a constant McNuggets that you can keep. Nuggets will always come in a pack of six. I love it. Yeah. 
I love that answer because yeah. yeah. I didn't expect it and I fucking love it and yeah, I love, love you. It. I might get one now. Fuck it. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. Should we go for McDonald's, I guess? flirting with you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining oh, me. Thank you. You thank are a you. doll. Where can people find you? I'm going to tag you on socials, but what is your, do you want people to follow you on social media and everything? I mean, you can. I'm not. Any special project you want to pitch or promote or anything? Ted Lasso is out on the 15th of March. I'll be watching. Dude, Go watch Ted delightful. Lasso. Season delightful. three. Season three. It got left on a cliffhanger. We yeah. want to know what happened because yeah. little junior coach man, I forget his name. Oh, that's Nate. bad, right? Nate, he went over to the bad guys. Oh, yeah. Over to the bad guys. Yeah. Last of the season ended, and I'm very, very excited for that. Oh, Nick Mohammed is just. The whole cast, I think, everyone, is incredible. Everyone's incredible. They're incredible. I just love the show. And as somebody who's like a foreigner to living over here, it's just so relatable. Even him just oh, like oh, drinking all the fizzy water and be like, Poof, at the start, yeah. I'm like, oh, so relatable. Because you have to be like, no. Tea. I don't even drink tea, so I even get that. I, I do it. get it. I do like tea. Oh, yeah, I had a nice cup of tea last night, actually. I do like tea and a nice scone and tea. Clotted cream and the scone and jam. Oh, mm, love that. Not a muffin. No, no, those are just fat cakes in the morning. Yeah, scones and clotted cream. Fine. I know. Oh, I know. That's the healthy option. Well, that's like an afternoon. <laughs> but no more muffins in the morning unless they really want to. Let's go get some chicken nuggets. Oh, my God. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Bye.